Good morning, YouTube, <clears throat> BookTube. This is Johnny. As is my mantra, time to make a video. My wife just left for church. They have prayer meeting before they have the main service. It is 9, 12 in the morning. It's a Sunday, July the 9th, 2023. Drinking coffee. Waking up to a new week, a new day, sun shining. It's going. To, it's not been hot lately. I am writing in my diary, as is my habit. I'm on page 581. I should hit this month page 600. Going into. I probably will get into about maybe 630 this month. I am reading for my morning devotions, The Love of Christ, uh, expository sermons on verses from the Song of Solomon, chapters 4 through 6. I am reading Richard Sibb's sermons on Song of Solomon, chapter 5, 8, and 9. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am sick of love. What is thy beloved more than another beloved, O thou fairest among women? So, he goes into what does it mean to be sick with love and then he goes into what is the, thy beloved more than another beloved O thou fairest among women and uh, so i'm reading that and this morning and i've been reading uh the conquered city by victor surge i'm almost done with this i'll probably finish it today and then I'm going to read another of his novels. And I'm almost done with Pellfire by Weimar Negatov. And I'm almost done with My Red Heaven by Lance Olson. So I'm pretty, well, I'm not really, I'm probably halfway through this, but if you look at this novel, uh, a lot of it is like that. It's not really full paragraphs. It's just lines upon lines of words. Uh, so you could probably read it in one day. It's just... Uh, this is... I find my red hev heaven interesting, but... Uh, unless you really know what who was living in Berlin in 1929, all the different intellectuals, the painters, the poets, the writers, political figures, what was going on, it just might mean nothing to you. <laughs> I thought what I would do in this video is I'm going to do another Friends of the Library Used Book Sale. This is part three. I'm just showing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. I could shut up I could have shown 10 but uh, I didn't want to over overwhelm these videos and I'm doing them slowly I can't even remember when the book sale was it was last June I think it was the middle of June so I'm kind of behind probably maybe the next video friends of library used book sale I'll just combine whatever is left and hope that the video doesn't run out. First thing I want to show is that this is a biography by Alan Lomax, the man who recorded the world, a biography by John Zewid. He was um, a, music, a musicologist, archivist, anthropologist, political activist, singer, author, DJ, photo photographer, talent scout, filmmaker, concert and recording producer, television host, 
Alan Lomax was one of the most remarkable figures of the 20th century, a man whose striking achievements in so many different areas of culture merited a front page obituary in the New York Times upon his death in 2002. No part of this staggering body of work, however, has proven to be influential or as long-lasting as his as his introduction of folk music to mass audience, changing not only how everyone in the country heard the music, but how they viewed America itself. When his father, the legendary John Lomax, who documented rural music for, for years and effectively made folklore a household word, set out on a recording trip for the Library of Congress in 1933. Alan joined him and later became later began his own ambitious series of field recordings which ultimately took him to Europe the Caribbean the Caribbean by the late 1930s he brought his discoveries Woody Guthrie Pete Seeger and Burl Ives among them to radio after the war he began producing concerts and ballad operas that daringly featured both black and white singers in an effort to establish the richness of folk song as the foundation for a new pop culture. So go, but he uh, wasn't, this was influenced by Bob Dylan. So I got that. I collect books on London. This is London in the 19th century by Jerry White. There's also, he did one, um, I think London, let me see how it goes. London in the 20th century, A City and Its People. This is London in the 19th century by Jerry White. He did a uh, book, Rothschild Buildings Life in the East End Tenement Block, 1887 to 1920. Campbell Bunk, the worst street in the North London between the wars. Uh, it's called London in the 20th, 19th century, a human awful wonder of God. Yeah, I, I've always been fascinated with London because I am into British history, British writers, especially modernists. And um, so I just grabbed this at the Friends of the Library used book sale. This is a nar another Larry McMurtry book that I got at the Friends of Library Used Book Sale. It's called Saga Was Nickname Essays on the American West. Saga Was, I can't pronounce it. And uh, yeah, I like Larry McMurphy's uh, nonfiction. I haven't read much of it. I did read Lonesome Dove years ago. And I have it downstairs in a paperback. But these are his essays on the West. And so I grab that. I have, as you all know, over the years I've collected books, we collected books on the American West. And I have a whole crate full, I mean, at least 40, 50 books on the American West. And... Uh, I kind of stopped collecting them because I have we have so many. And then I picked this book up. Uh, this is by Robert McFarlane, Landmarks, uh, shortlisted for the Wainwright Prize 2016. This is published by Penguin. Uh, it says here, quoting The Observer, this joyous meditation on land and language is a love letter to the British Isles. And I have another book of, of Robert McFarlane. He writes, it's kind of like on nature. Uh, it says here, quoting The Independent on Sunday, McFarlane's masterpiece, Exploration of the Links Between Language and Landscape. Few books give such a sense of enchantment. Uh, quoting Independent on Sunday, eye-opening, tongue-loosening, celebrates the microscopic verbal detail that clarifies 
a farmer's, a fisherman's, or climber's view of earth, sea, and sky. So I put that up. I collect books on New York City, 8th, 19th century, 8th, 20th century. And this is a book I'm always interested in, uh, in the turn of the century. In New York City, you had uh, a very vibrant Jewish community, uh, Judaism. Uh, you think what came out of Chicago, New York City, Jewish poets and writers and thinkers and educators. And, but this is a book called A Beethel Braille. 60 Years of Letters from the Lower East Side to the Jewish Daily Forward, edited with an introduction by Isaac Zeicher. It's just a little thing about East Side New York, the tenements, the, uh, the, the brittle Bittel Brief was a part of my life at a time when anything that is part of your life is of crucial importance. Isaac Medzaker has reminded me of a debt I can never repay. Maybe you will help me. By reading this wonderful, wonderful book and telling other people to read it, you still you will be doing them and other Americans a service. Jerome Willman, The New York Times Book Review. It has a quote by the New Yorker. Anyway, there was this Jewish daily, the Jewish daily, and it's uh, letters written by Jewish immigrants at the turn of the century. <clears throat> I collect books on the 60s, Woodstock, rock and roll, you know, Grateful Dead, this kind of look interesting. Frank and Charlie Woodstock, True Love in the 60s by Frank and Dedelenano. I can't pronounce the name. Uh, not many people had this in library things, so I don't know how it's really worth reading, but I just put it with my 60s collection and Woodstock. It's a memoir. I think that's a memoir. The 1960s, 24-year-old Frank Yandanalo rode the hippie counterculture movement alongside such visionaries as Artie Cornfield, Michael Lang to put together the Woodstock Festival of 1969, the era's emblem of love and peace. <clears throat> and it just goes on and on. This memoir is an account of his life as a hippie art director, intrepidor, manager, and screenwriter, as well as various other hats he wore in the creative industry, representing such musicians as Joe Crocker, Paul Butterfield, art directing at Penthouse Magazine, designing erotic sheets, writing a screenplay about Marilyn Monroe, and it goes on and on. I don't know, I just collect memoirs, it's on the 60s, had Woodstock in there, True Love in the 60s. I had this novel, this is by a uh, Native American writer. I collect her writings. I have this, but I can't find it, but I found another copy of it. This is Gardens in the Dunes by Leslie Marmoon Seiko. I have her writings and uh, I wrote I had this, but I couldn't find it, so I just grabbed this other copy of it. And then lastly, this is Orlando Figg's Revolutionary Russia, 1891 to 1991, A History. He has a new book out on just the history of Russia. I have other books by him. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, The Crimean War, Natasha's Dance, A People's Tragedy.
uh, an original reading of the Russian Revolution, examining it not as a single event, but as a hundred year cycle of violence in pursuit of utopian dreams. So I got this. So those are the books. I'm just, I have more downstairs from the Friends Library used book sale, but I just thought I'd show you these. Uh, so I can put these away. As you all know, we are packing tomorrow morning. The movers come, put everything in the garage. Tuesday, the three guys come and put tear up our carpet and put down flooring. Wednesday, they put everything back in the house, the movers. And maybe by the end of this month, everything will be back to normal. So yeah, I've been reading Pellfire by Negatov, The Conquered City by Victor Serge, My Red he Heaven by Lance Olson, reading this morning The Love of Christ by Richard Sibbs, writing in my diary. I'm almost finished packing in my study. Tonight, our son comes over, our oldest son. We got dismantled the TV, the computer, the printer, put all that in Carol's room. And uh, that'll be it. Should be glad when this is all past history. So I hope you had a good reading weekend. I hope you have a good new week. We're going to the middle of the month. Next Saturday will be the 15th of July. Soon will be in August. Kids will go back to school. I'll have my birthday. And then before you know it, it's autumn. And then it's winter. And then it's the year 2024. And history just keeps going by. So I'll sign off. I'll write in my diary, read, drink with some coffee. And just... Keep trucking. So until next time, bye.